Welcome to the beautiful great outdoors where I'm going to answer a very interesting question about silver. So the question I'd like to address today comes from Vintage Time Gems. Thank you very much for the question. And it relates to 92.5% silver, also known as sterling silver coins. And the question was around whether or not those coins of that purity are also a suitable hedge against inflation. A hedge against inflation is probably something that I'll address in another video in a little more detail. Uh, but for the sake of this, it's effectively, the question is along the lines of, are those coins from other countries that are not pure as good to have in your collection as the pure silver coins that a lot of people also buy? I think I'll take, a, it'll take me a little bit of time to give you uh, my opinion on that particular question. But I'll start with my broad overview is that if you're selling coins, I generally suggest it's better to sell your coins, like your collectible coins, to a coin shop and your bullion to a bullion dealer. The reason for that is that a bullion dealer specializes in bullion and you can generally be fairly confident that you'll be getting a fair market price for your coins. This should also apply to a coin dealer. So if you have coins that are not pure silver, that is to say the 92.5% silver coins, you would generally be better off taking those to a coin dealer if in the event that they have any additional numismatic value. So if you have a rare coin or something a little different and you take it to a bullion dealer, more often than not, you'll find that you're just getting the silver value out of it. Whereas if you take it to a coin dealer and they identify it as something that has additional collectability, you will generally expect to get a better price for it. Something else to bear in mind is not all old silver coins are 92.5% pure. So it's also worth double checking that the coin that you have is actually sterling silver. A good example of this is the old Australian coins after 1946 the silver content was reduced from 92.5% down to 50%. So it's always a good idea, particularly if you have a big bag of coins, to actually go through and separate them based on the date. Uh, you'll often find that coin dealers aren't too thrilled when you walk in and you have a huge bag of various coins and ask for them to sort them out. You generally find that you'll get paid on the lower purity coins, uh, based, as opposed to having them sit down for maybe a couple of hours and go through them all and separate them all for you. A really helpful tool for identifying the purity of your coins if you don't have any testing devices at home. I appreciate that for most people, even the most basic testing equipment is quite expensive. So unless you're making regular investments or if you're a dealer, it's often impractical to have you know a Sigma machine or an XRF at home. Uh, you can go on Numista. Uh, you can type in the denomination and country of origin of your coin and you'll generally be able to find the purity based off of that. Something else to bear in mind when you're dealing with old sterling silver uh, versus bullion coins is it's not common, so I don't want to, you know, uh, set off anyone's alarm bells and say, you know, Matt told me that this would happen, so look out. Uh, but it does happen on occasion that if you have a big bulk lot of coins, it can be worth your time to sift through and look out for key dates. So an example of this is a gentleman came into the coin shop a number of years ago that I was working in. And I, at the time I wasn't busy, so I actually did oblige and helped him sort through a number of the coins that he had. And one of the florins he had was a 1932. The 1932 is one of the key dates in the Florin series, and that particular coin, even in average quality, was still worth about $100. So it's, it can pay to get the older coins and have a look through as well on occasion. Something else to bear in mind with the old predecimal coins or your old silver coins in general is it's also not uncommon for them to have been cleaned or dipped in some sort of silver cleaning solution at some point in their life cycle. So when that has happened, you will generally find that the collectability component is significantly reduced and the value of the coin is predominantly just the silver value at that point. There's also a lot of flies out here today. Something else that I really encourage actively on this channel is if the opportunity presents itself, if you're predominantly someone that doesn't look into the collectability component of coins and you just want the raw metal value component, I really do encourage you to, if the opportunity presents itself, get some of those older coins and take a look at them, 
and there's something about it when you hold those coins and consider the journey that they've taken you know the things that they may have paid for back in the day you may find that you just start to get the collector's bug and it's a whole lot of fun and a really rewarding hobby okay so if i were to boil down my answer and make it a little more succinct i would suggest that they're two different two entirely different things for me and i realize that there is certainly a silver component to a lot of the old coins and that's great but for me i get much more excited about the history and old coins that have a bit of a story to tell and as a result i always steer in that direction but it can become a little more of a convoluted process if you're looking at selling your collectible old coins in a hurry you may find that that process is a little less straightforward and simple compared to if you have um, a stack of one ounce silver coins and you're just wanting to dispose of them you will generally find that if you're dealing with a reputable dealer you can do that in a heartbeat it's not a problem but if you have a number of old rare coins that process can take a little more time and it's not always as simple and straightforward so based on what i'm thinking you're looking at i would suggest stick with the the silver coins but my biased opinion is i love the old historical coins and i love coins from all over the world so you can never you can never go wrong with those either there's also plenty of coins out there that for me bridge that gap between um, old silver coins and bullion coins i've also done a video which i'll put in a link somewhere i'll, I'll see if i can get it up on the screen um, on the 1966 round 50 cent coins which are 80 percent silver and for me that represents a great uh, balance between accumulating bullion coins and having something with a little bit of historical significance uh, it's obviously uh, ties in with the introduction of decimal currency which was feb 14 uh, 1966 valentine's day for those at home <laughs> another interesting point of difference with accumulating just say silver coins generic silver coins and the old uh, coins from all over the world is you'll find that there is much more variety when you're collecting coins from all over the world and if you're pretty open to different purities uh, different eras you know um, all different things you can come up with a very eclectic and interesting collection and it's the type of thing that if you're anything like me uh, when you've got nothing on you like to have a sit down and go through it and think about it all that's a lot of fun whereas my generic silver coins i don't get me wrong i love you know having a look at the uh, all the the silver it's a lot of fun and I, I love thinking about it but it doesn't have the same depth it's not quite as interesting for me geez these flies just will not stop <laughs> i've said it before and i'll probably continue to say it again on the channel for anyone that's watching for the first time uh, it's also worth noting that any of the non-pure silver coins particularly in australia will incur gst so um, pure bullion coins don't attract gst in australia which is a 10 percent tax um, whereas if you're just getting the old non-pure silver coins uh, you may find that that attracts gst and as a result increases your average purchase price for your silver it can sometimes not be the most practical way to accumulate silver something else to bear in mind is the various weights of the old silver coins so when you're looking at your total silver holdings if you've got an accumulation of florins shillings sixpences threepences plus anything you can think of from all over the world you will have a number of odd weights sizes and purities and things like that um, which can just add a degree of complexity if you're purely wanting to look at how much silver you have how much raw silver you have um, there are a few calculations that need to be taken into consideration um, i'll give you a I'll put it up now on the screen the easy way for you to calculate how much pure silver you have or gold this applies to both metals if you have an old coin you can use the weight as well as the purity to easily calculate how much raw material you have of any given metal all righty i've been waffling on long enough i'll uh i'll give you a look at the view that i'm this is what i've been looking at all video quite the lookout so I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, if you like this kind of thing, seeing me out on location, uh, please give it a like. 
there's anywhere you suggest that I go visit to film a video, pretty much anywhere in Victoria. Uh, at some stage, I'd like to get out and do some road trips and things like that. Uh, feel free to leave a comment with your suggestions. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one. So it can sometimes not be the most practical. Gee whiz, these flies. Yeah, outdoor videos are a lot of fun, but I need to do something about these flies.